uh, the uh, 2022 uh, AAN, uh, I did direct a short course on chronic traumatic encephalopathy with my colleagues from the Boston University Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, where we're doing a lot of this groundbreaking uh, work. And uh, there are lots of new developments that are coming out in this field. And one of them is that there are new diagnostic criteria that have been introduced for traumatic encephalopathy syndrome. So this is sort of the version 2.0 of uh, these uh, criteria. And we are hopeful that these criteria will be better able to predict who will end up having chronic traumatic encephalopathy when they come to autopsy. Because I want to state very clearly, autopsy is the only way to currently diagnose uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, the criteria are similar to the older criteria and uh, necessitate first and foremost that there has uh, been some type of activity that causes uh, repetitive head impacts and that over time there have been progressive changes in thinking and memory that, uh, and behavior, I should say, thinking, memory, and behavior that do not seem due to another neurodegenerative uh, disease. And so it's that sort of combination that makes us suspect that CTE might be present in the underlying brain and would lead us to give a, a clinical diagnosis of chronic traumatic encephalopathy syndrome, because it's really a syndrome. It's not a, a disease state in and of itself. Uh, some of the things that can give a clue in um, uh, my mind and uh, based upon the data is there sometimes will be an elevation in total tau or in some of the particular uh, phosphorylated tau species in the spinal fluid. So that's one thing that can give a clue. And another uh, clue can be if you do a fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG PET scan, you can see patchy areas of hypometabolism. So whereas most neurodegenerative disease cause smooth confluent changes around wide swaths of the cortex, in chronic traumatic encephalopathy, um, there is patchy areas of pathology, which we believe is directly related to where the repetitive head impacts occurred we think we can get a hint of actually seeing evidence of that pathology by using the FDG uh, PET scan, looking for patchy areas of hypometabolism. I do want to be clear, you know, it's not pathognomonic, uh, there is a differential, but that's one clue that I use in my practice to look for patients that might have underlying CTE pathology in their brain.